Hey everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. Right here we have Miss Spidey, my grandma Stella Rosea, who is doing the most she probably has in like a month today while I'm filming videos, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, she's very active, and I think that this is so appropriate for the video I'm about to make about tarantula learning and cognition. Not that she's doing any learning or anything, but she's at least a little more, more active. Um, this may be a longer video, um, so hopefully you guys have something interesting to look at. Anyway, um, so I found a awesome blog, um, in a tarantula group, which is, you know, I find a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I don't really interact in the tarantula groups anymore, but I find a lot of really cool memes and, and information about tarantulas. And so I like to share them with you. Um, this, uh, blog is actually maintained by a girl named Becky. Um, the, it is the girl with the Darwin tattoo blog and Becky actually has a lot of really great degrees. She has a bachelor's in psychology and a master's in biology sciences. Uh, she is currently focusing on the behavioral and ecology burying beetles using behavioral experiments and stable isotope analysis. I'm not sure what any of that means, but she's a second year PhD student and her research topic is learning cognition and emotionality in invertebrates. And so I felt like she was a very good person to add to the research of learning and cognition in tarantulas and was a sound evidence-based person to give information or to look to for information about this. Her entire article and website is really, really cool, but her article particularly about tarantulas, um, I read it, it is so awesome. I highly suggest that you read it. I'm linking it down, down below so that you can read it. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of summarize. It's a long article. It'll take me forever to get through it if I go into every little detail that she points out, but she is amazing at using citations and you can just tell that like she's done a lot of research on this. And so I certainly trust the information that I'm about to give you. Um, so her whole basis of this particular subject on her website is that yes, tarantulas actually do have the ability to learn. And she gives tons of examples to back that up. But before I get into the examples, I do want to read you like her summary so that you guys can kind of get the gist of what I'm about to talk about. So I'm just going to write, read her direct words because I think that she is so wonderful in the way that she kind of summarizes her takeaway. So she says, what I hope you get out of these studies is that tarantulas can learn and they have physiological markers of stress that are similar to us, even if we don't know the extent of it or how they perceive it. So the decisions you make about your husbandry, handling, feeding, and breeding does influence the behavior of your tarantulas. That's not to say they bond with you or recognize you like your dog or cat does, but they aren't little instinct robots and you aren't committing the mortal sin of anthropomorphism if you believe they can learn and make decisions. The idea that invertebrate behavior is pre-programmed by instinct isn't a very useful way to think about any animal behavior. It might be an instinct to throw out a threat pose when startled, but the choices they make after that are very much based on their individual personality. Behavioral syndrome is the scientific word scientists use for animal personality and their life experience up to that point. They're individuals whose behavior is a sum of both their nature and nurture. I love that. I think that that's something that like, I really feel um, just in my very amateur observation of tarantulas and what many of you have said too. Um, this is just such a big controversy versus like how, how much do we know about tarantulas? What can they actually feel? Do they feel pain? Do they feel stress? Do they feel anything um, that could somewhat resemble um, what we feel. And so I, I love her, her whole thing about that. And so now I wanna get into a few examples that she actually shows to kind of back this up. And she is just so articulate in the way that she lays out this information. Um, so one of the points is that she does say that um, arthropods do have nervous system this nervous tissue cluster in their head that is considered by scientists to be the brain. 
And so a lot of us will say tarantulas have no brains. Um, there hasn't been much studies on that. But here, Becky um, is saying that part of the tarantula brain, which is like that nervous tissue cluster, um, focuses like the cerebrum. It does point out that the tarantula research is limited. And the reason why this is, is because researchers usually focus on easier models to study such as jumping spiders or bumblebees. So that makes a lot of sense about why there are limited studies. Um, so it does seem like tarantulas have a similar part in their nervous tissue cluster in their head that acts like a part of our brain. She also says that tarantulas can habituate. They may not bond with their owners per se, but they can learn behaviors. Um, and she points to a study in which um, tarantulas were able to learn a behavior, but it took a significant amount of time. And this study tried to get tarantulas used to flipping over on their backs, which I don't think is the most ethical thing to purposely do a behavior <laughs> like that to tarantulas because tarantulas only go on their backs when they have to molt. Um, but what they would do was they had these um, tarantulas going flipped over on their backs several times during the week. And they were kind of measuring how fast it took them to um, get back up or, or to right themselves. And they found that when they did this more often, when they were flipping these tarantulas on their back several times during the week, um, they didn't really learn. You know, they were immobile. They didn't try to get back over. They didn't try to move around. But when they were flipped over less over a longer period of time, um, so for example, if they were only flipped over once per day over the course of a month, they were actually able to decrease their immobility by half. So they were learning to recover faster when that happened. Um, and it seems like in that experiment, less is more for tarantulas in terms of their learning. It has also been measured that tarantulas may have increased cortisol after chronic stress, just like humans. Uh, and you can actually measure cortisol in tarantula blood, which is really, really cool. And here's something that's also very interesting myself as a psychologist. Um, they say, they talk about how tarantulas also have serotonin, which is a brain chemical. Um, they were saying that tarantulas that fight or are more aggressive have lower serotonin in their brains. Serotonin is the chemical that controls our mood and well being, and that it has the same job in humans. So that is really, really cool. Um, Becky also points out that tarantulas, um, and, and this is very similar to their ability to learn, they can learn to avoid shocks. So there have been studies where, and th these studies were done by the same person who measured the serotonin in tarantulas. Um, tarantulas were also found out to avoid electric shocks. I am not really sure about the ethics of this, but I guess someone had to do the study. So, <laughs> um, so this scientist restrained the tarantulas and suspended one of their legs in a water solution. Every time the tarantulas would touch that water solution with their legs, they would get shocked. And they learned to hold their foot up after a while and learn much faster the next time that they were in the experiment. But here's an interesting thing about this study. This scientist gave the tarantulas a drug that prevented protein synthesis in their brains, which actually messes up how animals form memories. So that was very, very interesting. So in the second part, when the tarantulas were given the drug, they were able to act normal otherwise, but they could no longer learn to avoid the shock after they were given that drug. So then the scientist examined their brains and he found that they showed evidence of reduced protein synthesis. And that was how they found out that memory formation in tarantulas is quite similar to other animals in a way. What they found was that the learning sessions only lasted 10 to 15 minutes and they weren't followed up with. So, you know, that is certainly a limitation um, in tarantula research and in that experiment, but very, very cool. Becky also talks about enrichment for tarantulas. Um, she states that tarantulas in enriched enclosures display more normal behaviors and less negative defensive behaviors when tested. There are two studies that looked into this. One was with a juvenile arboreal tarantulas and the other one was with a captive collection of ground-dwelling ground tarantulas. In the arboreal study, half the spiders were kept in enriched enclosures and the other half in non-enriched enclosures, just very simple. 
Um, and then after living this way for a period of time, like two years, they put the tarantulas in an arena and prodded them in a controlled way, the same for every single spider, and then recorded their behaviors. It looked like the tarantulas from the more basic barren enclosures displayed more defensive behaviors. They ran away further. They didn't make webs properly. So I wonder if that, I guess, makes a little bit sense in terms of if a tarantula has an enriched closure, do they have a greater sense of safety so that they'll be less defensive? I love that study because, as you know, I put a ton of stuff in Spidey's tank for enrichment. And I'm not sure if it actually helps her. She just interacts with some of it sometimes. But um, that is encouraging to me. And I think that, you know, all animals deserve to have fun things and enrichment and things they interact with. Another uh, study about tarantula cognition and learning is that tarantulas can use polarized light to learn which way to go in a simple maze. Um, I think that's very interesting because I have seen a, um, a short video, and you guys might have seen it too, where a jumping spider will like kind of chase a laser like a cat will. Um, and so I wonder if that's kind of the same. Becky says that in this study, tarantulas were placed in a simple maze that they could choose to go left or right. One of the group of tarantulas was assigned to learn how to go left or right with no cues, just consistency. Another group of tarantulas learned to go left or right based on how bright the light over each path was. And then some tarantulas learned to go left or right based on different directions of polarized light. These scientists assigned at random one direction to be safe and the other to accompany a, an air puff. So the tarantulas had to learn which side of the maze to choose based on the location, light, or polarized light over each path in order to avoid the air puff. And we all know how much animals hate being breathed on or having air puffs or any type of wind or current. <laughs> so I can see how the tarantulas would definitely want to avoid that. After about three training sessions, the tarantulas got as good as they were ever going to get with less than one error per session. At early in training, they made double the errors and spent much longer running around the maze. They were able to learn in all three conditions and were able to relearn if the experimenters did what is called a reversal. In a reversal, the right direction is suddenly the wrong direction. This experiment was done over about a month or two and the tarantulas remembered the correct choice throughout the experiment after they learned how to avoid the air puff. The tarantulas had learned the right way to go based on the presence of different directions of polarized light. And it, it seemed that the tarantulas are in the fastest based on the polarized light. Becky is saying that this proves that tarantulas in the experiment did form memories they can learn the difference between two different stimuli and where they are in space. They can remember that over time and learn to respond differently if the situation changes. I think that those several studies do show that tarantulas do have the ability to learn and have cognition. It may not be like ours, but I think it's hard to look at the research from Becky's blog and all the different knowledge that she has put together in this particular very useful article and to say that, you know, one, to say that, oh yeah, there's nothing to study here. We know everything that there is to know about tarantulas. I think that her work definitely dispels that. But to also say like, you know, maybe there's way more of these creatures than we know. Um, and that certainly excites me and fascinates me. I really do suggest that you guys go over to her blog. I have it linked in the description below. She is doing amazing work and I thoroughly enjoyed learning about the extra research that is around this. Um, I hope that in efforts like Becky's and other people like her that are, you know, looking closer at these, looking more closely at these creatures, that we will have a bigger understanding of how these beautiful animals work and that they deserve way more respect than what they're, that what we are giving them. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the study. And I will talk to you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Take care. Bye.